Hello everyone. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the columns. So columns are your compression members. They comes under your limit state of collapse in compression. Okay. So while designing, we take into uh, account the limit state of collapse in compression because we are designing uh, your columns as per limit state method okay so we have two types of limits that is limit state of collapse and limit state of serviceability so here we are going to uh, take the limit state of collapse okay so uh, what is a column column is your compression member mainly it carries a direct axial loading okay so here i have drawn this member it is um, it is carrying uh, mainly the load which is it is carrying is axial loading okay so this type of uh, member it is termed as your column so when your member is vertical then vertical load carrying axial load carrying member is termed as your column while if the member is horizontal or uh, inclined and it is carrying your axial loads then it is termed as your strut okay so talking about the dimensions of the column di uh, the, so the column can be rectangular circular or square okay so depending upon the requirements we choose the section okay so concrete is uh, good in compression so however uh, longitudinal steel rods are always provided to assist in carrying the direct loads okay because we are going to design a compression member so uh, we also know that concrete is very good in handling the compression uh, st compressive stresses so uh, uh, someone might think that uh, there is no any requirement of longitudinal steel in column but uh, still we provide some uh, longitudinal steel in the column section because sometimes what happens uh, the column uh, is going to take uh, the load with some uh, eccentricity okay we are going to discuss uh, that in detail uh, further so uh, while carrying that uh, eccentric loading what happens there uh, might be the chances of bending moment in the column okay so that can cause some uh, tensile stresses generation of tensile stresses in the column okay so we need to uh, give uh, provide a, a minimum area of longitudinal steel in the column okay whether it is required for the load point of view or not so to this tensile stresses due to eccentricity of vertical loads okay so also there is a upper limit of reinforcement in reinforced columns so higher percentage we can't uh, take a uh, uh, very very high percentage of steel in the column section because if we pay, uh, if we provide larger percentage of steel uh, it can be quite difficult um, uh, to place the concrete within the column section okay so so uh, we need to provide a minimum area of steel okay this is uh, as per the quote and we need to restrict the area of the reinforcement to some limit higher percentage of the limit okay so uh, now uh, your type of reinforcement in column we provide two types of reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement so if this is a section the reinforcement which is provided like this these are called your longitudinal reinforcements and the reinforcements which are provided in uh, form of ties okay so these are termed as your transverse reinforcements so in case of beam we provide transverse reinforcement as stirrups okay these are the stirrups and these are uh, these sorry these are your main reinforcements okay so uh, main reinforcement is provided here so these this is your these are your stirrups okay while in case of uh, your columns we termed it uh, that a term we term these transverse reinforcement as literal ties or spirals okay so on the basis of uh, 
your effective length we differentiate column into short column and long column or cylinder column so what is the uh, 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 there is another term that we use is uh, this is that is pedestal okay so what is a pedestal it is a short construction with certain dimensions like column okay it also carries axial load and uh, it can also have bending okay so it is given in clause number 25.1.1 page number 41 of indian standard 456 2000 okay so you can check there so if the effective length is your greater than three times the least literal dimension then it is considered as a column so if we have suppose we have a member here so this is your least dimension okay and this is the this is your width and this is the depth of the column okay so if your effective length is greater than three times the least lateral dimension least lateral dimension here is b then it is termed as column and if effective length is your less than three times b then it is termed as pedestal okay so this is uh, the this is how we differentiate column and pedestal as per our indian standard code now columns uh, are two of two types as we discussed short column and cylinder column so we differentiate these two on the basis of your effective length okay so effective length uh, of the column uh, it depends upon the support conditions i'll discuss uh, here with you so uh, first of all let us see the condition for short column if your effective length about x axis over d and effective length about y axis over b it is less than 12 then it is termed as short column and if it is not less than 12 then it is called as cylinder column or long column okay so what is lex lex is your effective length about x axis and ley is effective length about y axis okay so suppose if we have the cross section of the column like this here so if it is the it is the width of the column and it is the depth of the column okay so we are going to take first of all the effective length effective length of this column okay which depends upon the support conditions we'll discuss so this effective length with respect uh, sorry effective length about x axis about x axis we are going to take first okay so effective length about x axis divided by d and effective length about y axis divided by b okay so uh, with respect about the about y axis if we are talking about a y axis about y axis then we are going to take the width and if we are uh, talking about uh, the x axis then we are going to take the depth so that's why we are writing here like lex over d and ley over b okay so this is the uh, main difference between the short column and long column okay now lex and ley these are your effective lengths it depends upon the support conditions okay so indian standard 456 2000 annexure number e annexure e page number 28 okay oh, sorry table number 28 and page number 94 so you can see uh, you can check in the code at this page there are seven cases related to the this your support conditions okay so here i am going to uh, give you a brief detail about these seven cases okay so here uh, are uh, uh, the those uh, seven cases represented in this table is 456 2000 at page number 94 table number 28 so we will discuss uh, these cases in detail now so here uh, i am going to take the table so we have seven different cases so your first case is your effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at both the ends okay so there are uh, two values which are provided in the code 
first one is your theoretical value of effective length and second one is your recommended value of the effective length okay so what uh, we are going to take so uh, this this is the theoretical value for the given support condition and what is the recommended value that code recommends to take is this value okay so so here i am going to discuss all these seven cases okay so your case number one is effectively held in position at uh, and restrained against rotation at both ends so if you have code with you then you can open page number 94 and uh, look at the table the, the table number is 28 okay you will see there all these seven cases and the uh, values we will discuss uh, two values theoretical values and recommended values of effective length theoretical value is for the given condition and the recommended value is for given by the code okay so first case case number one that is effectively held in position and restrained again rotation at both the ends so it means that uh, the support are not allowed to move as well as not about to rotate okay so it cannot rotate like this and it cannot move like this okay so this is the first support condition so this is your now fixed support okay so this is a fixed support so the recommended value is 0 0.5 l uh, sorry theoretical value is 0 0.5 l and recommended value is 0 0.65 l if it is the length of the your column now next condition is you are effectively held in position at both the ends and restrained again to rotation at one end means one end is fixed and other one and the other end is hinged hinged means it is uh, allowed to uh, rot uh, allowed to rotate at this uh, end okay but it is not allowed to move okay so we have uh, a hinge here okay so at this uh, so so for this condition the theoretical value is 0 0.7 l and your recommended value is 0 0.8 l okay so case number three is effectively held in position at both the ends but not restrained against rotation it means it is effectively held in position means uh, movement like this and this is restricted at both ends and rotation is allowed means it can rotate like this here and here also it can rotate okay so this is your case number three for this uh, your value theoretical value and recommended value both are your l okay l effective now for case number four effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at one end and at the other end restrained against rotation but not held in position it means at uh, this end uh, rotation as well as movement is restricted but at this end rotation is restricted but movement is allowed so hence it is a roller support at this so uh, for this uh, the recommend uh, your uh, theoretical value it is 1L and your recommended value is 1.2L. Okay. So we can take the value as 1.2L. So the codes suggest this. So case number 5 in this case. So effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at one end. And at the other end partially restrained against rotation but not held in position. Okay so this is the same case of case number four here it is um, fixed okay it is not allowed to move as well as uh, uh, not allowed to rotate but here it is allowed to move but it is it is allowed to move but it is not completely allowed to rotate so we can say that it is partially restrained against rotation okay so this is the main difference here it is uh, um, it is allowed to move from here to here but it is completely restricted to rotate okay but it is here in this case here it is partially restricted to rotate okay so in this case uh, the your theoretical value is uh, not it is uh, not possible to calculate the theoretical value but the recommended value code recommends the value for this case as 1.5 l okay now moving to next 
so case number six uh, in this case uh, it is effectively held in position at one end and not restrained against rotation at the other end uh, it is restricted against uh, rotation but not held in position so here it is a hinge okay it is not allowed to move but it is allowed to rotate but here it is allowed to move but it is not allowed to rotate okay so for this case your theoretical value is 2 as well as your recommended value is also 2 okay so we can take the value to be twice of l okay so the last case is you are effectively held in position and restrained against rotation at one end and uh, at the other end it is completely free to move and completely free to rotate so hence it is a case of your cantilever column okay so for this value your recommended value is 2l okay l effective is 2l so these are the seven cases on the basis of which we these are the seven support conditions on the basis of which we calculate effective length of the column okay so you will be provided with the length of the column okay but we, uh, we need to calculate the effective length so effective length is based upon the support conditions so we can uh, take uh, the support condition from these cases and take the values uh, which is recommended by indian standard code okay so so now we have discussed about uh, the effective length and the support conditions for uh, different cases of your uh, columns now moving forward we will discuss uh, limit state of collapse in compression there are certain assumptions which are very very much important to discuss while uh, starting the design of your column section so uh, your assumptions for the limit state of collapse are uh, same as that for uh, your limit state of collapse for flexor so but uh, there are certain uh certain changes or uh, we can say it's, there are certain uh, additions of assumptions uh, that we will discuss so first of all uh, let me um, give you the basic uh, assumption first one is your plane section a uh, normal to axis remain plane after bending uh, this is also a uh, for your flexure members and the maximum strain in the concrete at the outermost compression fiber it is taken as 0 0.0035 in bending when neutral axis lies within the section okay what it means now we know that uh, your maximum strain in the compression fiber it is taken as 0 0.005 in bending okay so if we take uh, your uh, here if we take the stress strain diagram of your concrete then it is like this okay so here the value from a uh, value 0 0.002 and the, what is the maximum strain maximum strain in the concrete is 0 0.0035 so this is the strain at failure of the section okay so this is the assumption that uh, uh, here the maximum strain in the concrete at the outermost compression fiber it means that if it is your section okay so then what is uh, your outermost compression fiber okay so outermost compression fiber will be this okay if it is your d and if it is your b then outermost compression fiber will be this okay so if your neutral axis lies somewhere here inside or at the edge of this column then what will be the uh, value of your strain at this outermost compression fiber the value of strain will be maximum for the concrete and it is 0 0.0035 okay so this is your assumption number two okay so now a third is your tensile strength of the concrete is ignored we know that and the stress stress block may be assumed to be rectangle trapezoid parabola or any other shape which uh, result in prediction of strength in the uh, substantial agreement with the result of test okay so we do some test of compressive strength of your concrete okay and we can uh, take the value 
to be trapezoid, uh, parabola or rectangle. So whatever is the case. Okay. So it depends upon the test results. We can take the value stress block. Okay. So here if we see, so if this is a, this is your stress block. Okay. So it is uh, from up to a strain 0 0.02. It is your parabolic and after that it is in the shape of rectangle. Okay, so it depends upon the test results. So next is your stresses in reinforcement are derived from representative stress strain curve for type of steel used. Okay, so this is in regard to the stresses. If we want to calculate the stresses in reinforcement, then we can uh, we have to use the stress strain curve for steel. So we have different stress strain curve for different types of steel for m uh, mild steel we have like this we have definite yield point but for torque steel we don't have definite yield point so we calculate we take yield point uh, at 0.2% uh, of proof stress so um, we take uh, we can calculate the value of your stresses in uh, reinforcement from these okay these uh, stress strain curves now next is your uh, for design purpose your partial safety factor it is taken as 1.5 it shall be applied and maximum strain in the tension reinforcement in the section at failure it should be it should not be less than your f1 fy upon 1.15 es plus 0 0.00002 okay so these are the assumptions that are also valid for your flexure design of flexure so this is the value of the maximum strain in the reinforcement okay steel at failure so this shall not be uh, when the strain in the in your uh, tension reinforcement it reaches to this value okay and it is greater than this value then only the uh, your section will uh, reinforcement will fail otherwise not okay so specifically for the limit state of collapse and compression so in in in, in addition to these uh, these assumptions there are certain uh, assumptions that we take that is the maximum compression strain in the concrete in axial compression is taken as 0 0.002 this is very very much important uh, let us understand this so this assumption says suppose we have a section like this okay so this is the width and this is the depth of the column okay so for the column section the maximum strain diagram is like this okay so the maximum strain in the outermost compression fiber it is taken as 0 0.002 instead of your 0 0.0035 which is at failure okay why we are taking this value here because uh, as we know that so this is the value right so this is the value of your stress strain curve for concrete right so here we can see that the this is the strength okay so this is your uh, 0 0.45 fck okay so this is the strength that we get for maximum strength at your failure strain so here we can see that the stress is increasing from the initial uh, your uh, innermost fiber that is from zero towards certain value okay so when the strain reaches to your 0 0.002 okay so at this point this concrete gain its maximum strength that is 0 0.45 fck okay so that's why we are taking and after that the this uh, strength value remains constant okay so that's why we are taking the strain value up to 0 0.002 instead of your 0.0035 okay so here at the compression fiber at the maximum compression fiber your maximum value of strain it is taken as 0 0.002 okay and also uh, at this point when the uh, when we are taking uh, the strain to be 0 0.002 at this point your neutral axis lies at infinity okay so neutral axis is at infinity okay so that's why we are taking the strain to be uniform okay so that is 0 0.002 so the stress as i have discussed the stress will be maximum that is uh, so, sorry strength stress distribution we can say 
it will be maximum that is 0.45 of fck okay so next uh, important assumption is that the maximum compressive strain at the highly compressed extreme fiber in concrete subjected to axial compression and bending and where there is no tension on the section shall be 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 times the strain at least compressed fiber okay so here uh, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, we design the column okay when we design the column we design it for three conditions okay first one is when it is actually loaded okay so we, we are just designing it to be actually loaded no bending here in this case okay secondly we design it for axial load plus uh, your uni axial bending okay uni axial bending means uh, the bending is in one axis at about one axis okay either x axis or y axis okay so that is called uni axial bending so when the uni axial bending occurs there are your tensile stresses that are developed in the uh, in the section okay so and the third case is uh, we design the column for your compressive load and biaxial bending okay so biaxial bending means uh, the bending uh, the movement is taken in taking place in both the direction that is x axis as well as y axis okay so if we take uh, just uh, so here what uh, this assumption is saying it uh, this assumption is for subjected to your axial compression and bending okay so now let us uh, discuss this assumption here okay so let us take uh, your uh, column section here that is of b and d okay this is the column section so let us take this face is highly compressed okay so if it is highly compressed so then we will get the maximum strain at here so we'll draw the strain diagram if it is highly compressed then we'll get the strain diagram for concrete as this okay so the value of this strain will be 0 0.0035 the maximum strain okay so now we have the value like this you can see this is the value of your stress strain curve for concrete this value is your 0 0.45 of fck okay and this is your 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.002 strain and it is 0 0.0035 okay this is the strain value so uh, for, um, when uh, the section reaches to this point this strain okay 0 0.002 then your strength in the concrete that is your stress it become almost constant that is 0 0.45 fck okay so in case of your uh, if we take uh, the column to be just uh, having axial load axial loading and there is no any eccentric loading okay so it is just passing through the center axis of the this section so at this case what we assume that the maximum strain in the uh, fibers it is equal to this 0 0.002 we are not taking the value to be this okay but when uh, you are loading okay this loading it uh, is eccentric okay so then there will be uh, bending in the section okay so due to that bending what will happen this uh, this outermost fiber will be highly compressed okay so if uh, highly compressed then uh, we are taking the value to here to be 0 0.0035 so this is the value okay now if we uh, look at this uh, figure then uh, we can get the value of this strain somewhere here okay so this is the value of your strain 0 0.002 okay now what we take here that if 
this line okay if this uh, if uh, your um, uh, this section this column section it is rotated about this point okay it is rotated about this point then we will get the strain in the concrete section like this okay we assume that this uh, the, the the beam is supposed to rotate at this point okay because uh, we are not assuming that the or uh, your uh, section is uh, about to rotate at this point because if it uh, take that then your strain the maximum fiber strain will increase from 0 0.0035 okay and that is not permissible okay so that's why we are assuming that the or uh, your concrete uh, that the, 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 your section it is uh, rotated about this point so when it is uh, rotated then there will there is minimum strain at this point okay and uh, there is uh, some strain here in the this fiber which is less than 0 0.0035 okay so this point is called your pivot point okay we can say that it is a pivot point here okay so let us name it d so now so after uh, rotating uh, your uh, uh, this section about this point we will get uh, your strain at this point which will be less than 0 0.0035 okay at the highest comp high, highest compressible side and we will get certain value of strain at this point also okay this is the least compressive side so this is your least compressed compressed side and this is your highly compressed side okay so we will get uh, the values of strain when uh, the this uh, section is uh, assumed to rotate about this point and why we are rotating about this because we can't rotate it about this or this because if we we'll rotate uh, here then we will have the strain value which will be more than this okay which is not recommended okay so now uh, uh, i have drawn the figure here also so you can see here now uh, this is the value okay so let us take uh, this uh, the strain after rotation the strain uh, which uh, comes here at this point that is the least compression side that is ep epsilon lc is the least compression okay so, so epsilon uh, lc is the strain at least compressed side okay so this is represented by your ae here if we take the point at a and this is e so then it is ae so from this figure we uh, we assume that this cf it is your three fourth of your epsilon uh, your l e okay three fourth of this so three fourth when you calculate it comes out to be 0 0.75 of epsilon l e okay so this value is your 0 0.75 of epsilon l e okay so now uh, l uh, c a and this is l c okay now uh, c f is this three fourth of epsilon l c so strain at f b okay so now the strain this strain we need to calculate this strain now when we rotated this okay so now the strain f b it will be 0 0.0035 minus 3 fourth of epsilon lc that is 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 of epsilon lc okay this value will come so this point that is this point that capital d it is at a distance 3 by 7 d from the maximum compressed side okay so epsilon uh, lc okay this can also be find out from the diagram when uh, because we know the value of this uh, strain at the point this at this point capital d so if we'll extend this line here then we can get uh, similar triangles here and we can calculate the value of epsilon lc from here also okay so we the, 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 it means that epsilon lc can be easily calculated okay so uh so we are uh, getting the value uh, of your strain here so it satisfied this it satisfy this uh, now um, 
assumption okay so the uh, which says the maximum compressive strain at highly compressed extreme fiber this fiber okay in the concrete subjected to axial compression and bending so when it is subjected to uh, compressive force as well as bending okay so due to bending uh, or in the compressive force we get the strain here this fb okay so uh, so the maximum compressive strain at the highly compressed fiber in the concrete subjected to actual compression and bending where there is no tension on the section when there is no tension on the section it shall be 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 times the strain at least compressed fiber okay so 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.75 of epsilon lc okay so this is very very much important okay so why it is also important because uh, by uh, this diagram okay by this diagram this uh, strain diagram we can find out the capacity of the column okay so uh, this is called the interaction diagram so by this uh, by this uh, stress strain diagram we draw interaction diagram interaction diagram which is very very much helpful in calculating the load in the capacity that is the capacity of the column okay so on the basis of this stress strain diagram which is uh, useful for your column design in uniaxial bending we can draw an interaction diagram and from which we can calculate the capacity of the column okay so these are uh, given in your uh, course that is uh, sp16 we use okay so we can directly use the interaction diagrams we do not uh, need to uh, draw this uh, again and again and uh, find the value of strains okay or to, to find the value of your uh, your capacity of the column we can say okay so so now let us uh, find out how much load uh, the section can take now okay so this is uh, these are the two assumptions please go through this again so uh, now uh, we'll find out how much load the concrete section this column section can take okay so we'll take here easily loaded column so here uh, we have a stress strain diagram for concrete okay so this is your idealized curve for concrete in cubes when we cast a cube then we get a idealized curve like this okay this is parabolic and this is rectangular okay so up to 0.002 strain it is parabolic okay so this is idealized curve so uh, in cube but when we use in structure then this uh, strength is assumed to be somewhat less and it is 0.67 of fck so it get uh, the value less than fck okay so this is called your idealized curve for concrete in structure okay so this is for cube and this is for structure for which we are calculating now what is design curve when we uh, divide this value by your safety factor that is gamma m that is 1.5 then we get the value design value of the uh, strength stress okay so that is 0 0.045 fck so that we are taking at the extreme and extreme fiber of the compression member the maximum strength is 0 0.05 maximum stress that is 0 0.05 fck at failure strain okay so it is assumed so we always take design curve okay so here for strain 0 0.002 the strength is coming out to be 0 0.45 fck okay now the value p is uh, taken equal to uh, that is ac 0 0.45 fck plus as 0 0.75 fy minus 0 0.45 fck okay how this uh, formula come so we if we want to take the load that is coming out on column it is going to uh, uh, this uh, load if it will be due to your concrete as well as steel okay so we calculate it as area of concrete multiplied by the strength of the concrete and area of steel multiplied by the strength of the steel okay so if we take a section here that is of a b 
and t uh, your dimension so and if we are using your bars in this section uh, like this okay so what is your ac ac will be the area of the concrete section so area of the concrete section here will be b multiplied by d whole area of the concrete section okay and the strength of your uh, concrete at your 0.002 strain here we are calculating it for 0.002 strain because we are talking about actually loaded column okay so for actually loading loaded column the strain maximum strain we assume is 0.002 so that's why we are taking the value of your stress at this strain that is 0.002 so at this strain the value of your concrete uh, sorry the value of your uh, strength is coming 0.45 fck so we'll put the value here so ac multiplied by 0.45 fck plus okay as that is the area of the steel we are providing here so we can assume the area of the steel we need to provide so area of the steel multiplied by 0.75 fy now what is this okay so this is the corresponding stress in reinforcement at this strain okay so at this strain when the concrete is achieving 0.45 fck then the steel will achieve your uh, some strength okay so that is calculated on the basis of stress strain curve for different steels so those the stress strain curve uh, on the basis of stress strain curve we have calculated the value of uh, this strength at this uh, strain that is 0.002 strain for fe415 it is uh, 0.79 of fy and for fe250 it is 0.87 of fy and for fe500 it is 0.75 of fy okay so these are the values so now here we are uh, writing the formula for uh, your fe 500 okay so we are taking it as p equal to ac that is area of concrete multiplied by strength of the concrete plus area of the steel multiplied by strength of the steel okay so now the area of the steel multiplied by strength of steel minus area of steel multiplied by strength of concrete why we are doing this now okay so uh, let us understand this now area of the concrete we have taken here is b into d okay in this hole uh this this is the area of the whole section including this also where we are providing the bars now okay so if you want to calculate uh we, we have already taken this okay we have already taken this area here okay so now we want to concrete uh, we want to subtract the amount of the concrete which is present in this uh, a area if the your reinforcements are not provided here because if we are um, now we are providing reinforcement here okay so now if when we are providing reinforcement here then the amount of the concrete which is taken up by this reinforcement now we need to subtract that okay to get the in net effect net area of the uh, your section okay to calculate the net area so now that is that area will be equal to and that's why what we are doing here we are doing as that is the area of the steel multiplied by this that is the strength of the steel minus area of the steel multiplied by strength of concrete okay so this is uh, how we are getting this formula now moving forward so uh, now area of the steel how can we calculate this area of steel now number of bars multiply by area of the single bar okay so now the, how many how much is the number of the bar that we are using we need to multiply this uh, with the area of the single bar to get the area of the steel okay so now for fe 250 we can calculate the same formula this was uh, calculated with this this formula was calculated for your fe 500 now let us calculate the formula same formula for your fe 250 so p will be equal to area of the concrete multiplied by 
strength of the concrete that is 0 0.45 fck okay plus area of the steel multiplied by strength of the concrete now for for fe 250 the strength of the concrete here will be 0.87 fy for fe 250 okay so we'll replace here and now we'll replace uh this value that we are taking we were we, we take we took here that is 0 0.75 fy now we'll replace this value from 0 0.87 of fy here and minus 0 0.45 of fck okay the same so now we assume that uh, your p uh, is acting within 5% of the lateral dimension as per the code okay so what we are saying uh, we are saying that the load okay so the load which is acting on this column here it is not acting uh, it is not acting at the mid section at the midpoint of the your uh, this cross section okay at this midpoint okay why because due to some construction work or uh, uh, some other uh, field site uh, problems your pr uh, construction problems uh, while uh, doing the construction work there might be uh, the case that this load is not acting accurately at the center okay it can be acting uh, with some certain eccentricity okay so what our code says that we assume that the load is acting at 0 0.05 d okay 0 0.05 d means five percent of the lateral dimension five percent of the lateral dimension means d okay so five percent of the lateral dimension come out to be 0 0.05 d so we take a 0 0.05 d periphery over here and we assume that the load is acting in this periphery okay so this is you termed as minimum eccentricity okay so we assume that uh, the load is acting uh, at uh, 0 0.05 d periphery about the center okay so so now if the load go beyond this uh, limit that is 0 0.05 d this periphery if it the load acts uh, beyond this boundary then in that case we the load applied is multiplied by eccentricity that will give the corresponding movement okay so that is the another case okay this is uh, we are discussing the uh, just the uh, column design of column with actual load acting okay so that will become the uh, case where we need to take into account the bending also okay so pending can be uniaxial or biaxial so <coughs> here uh, actually loaded column uh, the load uh, may be acting at five percent of the lateral dimension it is not necessarily at the center okay so by by this what happens the value of the load that we have calculated previously the that is the p it reduces its value so up to certain amount okay so what we take we take the value to be now 90 percent of the previous value okay so the clause number clause number 39.3 of is code says that now the load acting is 0 0.9 4 point uh, multiplied by 0 0.45 fck into ac plus 0 0.75 fy into as okay now here we are uh, ignoring the value that is minus 0 0.45 fck why because that value will be so small so uh, uh, that's why we are uh, neglecting that value so we are taking just the st uh, strength of the steel and strength of the sorry area of the steel multiplied by strength of the concrete okay so so we uh, can say that the value of the load is reduced now okay why it is reduced because due to this uh, minimum eccentricity okay so we are taking that the load is coming out to be less okay so the capacity of the uh, column uh, to uh, carry the load it has been reduced okay so now <coughs> p uh, will come out to be 0 0.45 fck into ac 
plus 0 0.6750 as of fy when we'll uh, modify the equation so now clause number 39.3 page number 71 of is 456 2000 please check it there so you will see the formula for load is 0.4 fck into ac plus 0.67 fy into as now you can uh, easily calculate what is ac and what is as okay so this is the formula that we are going to use for the calculation of load for uh, actually loaded column okay so here uh, in this uh, lecture uh, we just uh, uh, took some uh, assumptions uh, while designing the compression member as per Indian standard code and uh, some codal provisions okay so in the next section uh, of the next part of this video now we are going to take the example for the compression member okay take care thank you